Okay, welcome everyone. Uh, this is October, Sunday, October the 11th, 2020. And this is the Havila Ecclesia Gold of Heaven Encounter Group. So welcome everyone. So glad to see you all here today. And um, just wondering if anybody was uh, sensing a mandate for today. Um, anyone's come with anything on their heart that they feel led to share. And uh, today, Patience uh, and I will be facilitating. Hello, everybody. We're happy you here, and we're happy you are listening, those who'll be listening later. Yes. So there's been quite a lot uh, going on in the spirit realm. I know that we're in such a season of change for this new uh, year, new calendar year in the, in the Hebrew calendar. And um, just wondered if anyone had felt any shift, anything different, any testimonies to share of what God has been doing this week and if he's been showing you anything related to gold or anything related to what we've been talking about in the past few weeks on Havala. And last week, uh, if you all remember, we did the um, Be Still and Know I Am God session where we were quiet Amen. in his presence. Amen. Does anybody has a testimony relating to that? Did you get a chance to wait during the week? Well, um, I can share something. Um, I wasn't I wasn't on last week. Um, I was in uh, an actual retreat, which was a, an enormous blessing to me. And I just want to share that I received a new name. And um, the new name was something that I wasn't quite expecting, but um, it was quite interesting. We were, we were quiet before the Lord, even though I was on, wasn't on this encounter um, last Sunday. But the name that I received was Fatia. It's spelled F-A-T-I-A. And I knew it was the Holy Spirit because it wasn't something that I would have, I would have chosen for myself. But the name actually means daughter of the prophet and she who conquers. And so... I know that this is a new season for me and, you know, and I, I intend to step, I stepped into that fullness of that name. And I believe I see the, it work being worked out in my life. So I just want to share that with you. I, I was blessed this week with that. That's awesome, Cindy. Mm. That's a nice name. It's walking it. It's it something. <laughs> <laughs> Would anybody else like to share? It doesn't have to be a new name, but it could be anything that, um, you know, you felt um, something happening that the Lord was showing you this week. Oh, blessings, um, Shingi. Shingi says, love, love the new name, uh, Cindy.
so with me, um, I was able to do the be still and know I'm God quietness before him during the yeah. week. Yeah. I, I literally asked the Holy Spirit to help me do it. Mm. And, and what, when I said that, I saw that uh, it kept coming to me. I kept being drawn away to do it. And what he said was, um, um, okay, let me back up. When uh, he kept drawing me to do it, and then he told me that I have to start, I have to start operating above time, mm. or or operating um, with with rich time, using rich time, stepping into rich time. Yeah, because it's, it's like it's like you're too busy, you know. Yes. You want to do this, but you're too busy. So I was wondering how I can fit it in. And I, I want to be able to still myself, still my mind, you know, for real. Yes. I, I know yes. you can be you can be walking around and still be mindful of his presence. But I wanted mm. the, the, the quality one where you can really be shut out from this world for about at least 10, 20 minutes. And that's yes. when he told me told me that this is going to help immensely if I operate in rich time. Yes, yes, yes. And um, to be honest with you, patience, that is something that I would like to do more of as well. Although I'm, you know, like I'm always cognizant of God's presence wherever I am, even at work. Um, and But the busyness um, has been a challenge but you know it's something that i want to be able to to do more is to come aside and just be quiet and be still and that seems like the hardest thing to do right now um mm -hmm. but it, it if it's the desire of our heart and like you said we ask the father to help us to do that then he we will hear him saying stop what you're doing and you know put aside this amount of time or get up earlier and just spend 15 minutes with me before you start doing anything or even at night. And um, so it's something that, you know, I believe that all of us want to do and it's just stepping into that time frame. It's, uh, uh, Cindy. Oh, uh, no. go ahead. Who is it? It's, uh, I just wanted to ask, sorry to interrupt. Um, okay, did, you say, go ahead. did you say which time? Rich, R I C H, rich, like mm, quality rich time. time. And, oh, and, okay, um, mm. Justin Abraham is the one who uses that word, rich time. Yeah. But uh, yeah. really, what the Holy Spirit was referring to after I inquired, how do I get rich time? Is redeem the time, and it's it's a it's yeah. a part of a scripture in the Bible. Redeem yeah. the time for the days are evil, and you see. It's not like you being able to manage your time, but being able to stretch time or freeze time. That's what he was telling me. And he allowed me to practice it. So it's like uh, um, you can do in, in 10 minutes what you would normally take an hour to do. That is rich time. That is redeeming the time. So you don't, it's not like you are, um, you are multitasking very well or you have been able to set time apart and use it for this. No, is that you engage your Holy Spirit and he enables you to do so much in a little time than it's humanly possible. And that is because the Holy Spirit with you stretch the time or froze the time. And uh, an example in the Bible I saw was with uh, Joshua. When Joshua was, uh, was fighting, and then the, um, what happened? When Joshua was fighting and the sun was setting and he hasn't won the victory yet. And he knew that if he let the sun set, then they have to stop where, but they are sort of, and then, you know, maybe resume the following day and he might lose. So he, he stood there and declared, a sun, you know, setting until I've won this victory. And the sun did set, uh, sorry, uh, the sun did, hold its pace. It didn't set until he has finished the, she has finished and won the victory. Then the sun sets. And if you all know, 
in the, uh, uh, in history it has there is a there is a, uh, there's a statement out there that's uh, how do i say it it is reported in history that there was a day that the sun didn't set a day was has been missing and they don't even know what kept mm -hmm. the sun from not setting but it was joshua so it was something that physically really happened that yeah. is what the holy spirit was telling me come on sons of god you can do this. This is your best right. Yes. Yes. And the, and the time, um, you know, even operating above the sun, um, I think that has something to do with it as well. And stepping out of earth time and into, into um, heaven's time, or actually there's no time in heaven. That's it. It's completely <laughs> stepping outside of time. Um, which so many of us, I mean, myself, um, has been completely ruled by. But what I found to be interesting is, um, and I had mentioned this to a couple of people, that at the beginning of this COVID, I noticed that my watch stopped. I think it was on the very day that our country went into lockdown and my watch stopped. And I haven't worn a watch since. And I said, well, maybe I should just go get a battery or just go get a new watch or whatever. But it's almost like the Lord was saying, no, don't worry about getting a new watch. That's it. And so I didn't. And I mm -hmm. haven't worn a watch since that day. Mm -hmm. And that was back in March. Wow. And so time, for months, you know, the Lord was speaking to me about time. And I think it's, it, it's still a revelation that he wants to bring forth there for me, but um, time has been different. It's been different. And he's doing something with time in the earth realm. I don't know if, if the Lord has shown anybody else uh, something, you know, more to that revelation. Can I share? Yes, please. Yes. Um, I, I hope I get this <laughs> right the way I, <laughs> I heard it, but Nancy Kuhn, um, she was uh, an estate agent in that time, and she had been spending a lot of time before the Lord, and she was just praying, and just, but she had to go to work, and when she got to her desk, she just said, Lord, and the, there was a whole pile of files on her left-hand side, and she knew she had to get through all those files, and she just said, Lord, she says, I've just had such a beautiful time with you, I just, I just want to continue spending this time with you. And he said, why not? Mm -hmm. And she put her head down and um, on her arms. And um, she says it wasn't, it was like a few minutes. And um, when she put her head up, all the files were on her right-hand side. That means they had all been done. And people oh. were coming to her and they were saying to her, um, Oh, when you did this or you said this, so she was busy in the office the whole day. The whole day had gone past and all the files were on the right hand side, but she had sort of, you know, just spent those few minutes putting her head down and the files were done. So she experienced rich time. Yes. That's a beautiful example. Awesome testimony. And Joshua did it. And this yeah. week, he, he gave me the grace to do it. He gave me the grace to do it. Uh, uh, something I had to do on my job that takes normally two and a half hours. You know, I sit down and have to go through all that. Too. That's something I do uh, uh, twice a week. And every time I'm going to do it, I dread, you know, because I don't like <laughs> sitting down for two whole hours, two and a half hours. But yeah. after he spoke to me about rich time and redeeming the time, as the Holy Spirit, and I mean, I said, Holy Spirit, really, I need to do this during the week so that I can get the time to give you quality time. So help me. And so when I yeah. sat down to do this, this job, I sat down and then it came to me, why don't we try with him in the time? I said, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and guess what? I, look, I looked at the time, the normal time I sat down, I sat down and I was doing it. But all the time I was doing it, I was like uh, uh, engaging. Uh, my spirit was engaging that I am acting with the Holy Spirit and 
I am redeeming the time. This is going to be a rich, a rich time project. Yes. Guess what? I normally use two and a half hours to do it. I use an hour and a half. Mm. I use wow. an hour and a half and I, it's like, it felt like the same time though. But when I finished, I look at, at the clock. No, it wasn't the same time. Yes. Yes. Wow. <laughs> it's good. Well, I, was, I was amazed. So I, I, I think <laughs> it's something we all have to try. That is one of the things that is going to help us to be able to mm -hmm. uh, be still in his presence and not bother about other things. Because at times you think that if I spend 30 minutes in, uh, on his, in his presence, then I'm wasting 30 minutes doing something I need to do, you know? But he said, yeah. not so. You have, you have a tool that can help you do that because you were born for this. You were born mm. to reign above the sun, to operate above the sun. When no. we are under the sun, then we are under the time. Mm. But if we are not under the sun, we control time. We control the sun. We can tell the sun, hold your peace, pause. Yes. Even, even in some movies, if you watch some movies, people freeze time and do things and come back. The movies have gone ahead of our suns. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I see that. Um, yeah, because you know, you know, we have been ruled by time for millennia, and it, I, I don't know how to say this, but it's almost like it's almost like time has taken the preeminence over everything else. And you know how people say time is money. Um, the minute that time a price is put on time, we feel like every moment that we're not doing something, we're wasting, like we're wasting time. But it's, but it's, not, it's not that we need to be wasted. It's not that we're wasting time by being still. And I think that sometimes the guilt is being felt that, oh, we're taking too much time doing this and we're not getting, we're not being productive. But we are being productive, you know? And so I think that, um, you know, time has been an enemy for some of us, if I could describe it like that. It's been like an enemy. But the, the mandate that I'm sensing is that we all step into rich time and that that rich time will begin to take the preeminence over the earth time in our lives. So I don't know if that's resonating with anybody else, but that's, that's what I was sensing. Yeah, I have something similar to that. Um, I think uh, another way we can put what you are saying is to um, come from under the sun. That is what he told me. You know, Ecclesiastics, uh, Ecclesiastics 4, the whole chapter talks about under the sun, under the sun, under, under the sun. And yes. he told me, come out from under the sun. You mm. were made to be above the sun, ruling and reigning. So you would not be oppressed or suppressed or even, you will not even die if you are above the sun and you operate from there. Mm. Because when we conquer time, we have conquered death. People mm. die because they are managing time or time is managing them. That's maybe a better way of to say it is that they are under the time, under the sun and the time. So a time mm. comes to die. If we check Ecclesiastes 4, the whole chapter, it says time to, live, time to be born, time to die. But mm. if there's no time, there's no dying. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I'm seeing that patience is that time is linked, has an expiration date. And so time is linked to death. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know if anybody else is seeing that um, or anybody else has anything else revelation to share concerning that because each joint supplies each of us has a piece of the puzzle um and god is revealing so just interested to hear if anybody else has has something else to add to that Well, patience. Did you did you feel to lead us into stepping into that um, into rich time? 
Yeah. I want to know of the sun. Yeah. I want to know if everybody's in agreement. Do you all feel like doing this, stepping into? Yeah, I just want to say that, yeah, I'm in complete agreement. Um, we, myself and a few sisters, we just had an incession earlier on, just before this one. And um, we, we engaged um, time, which was amazing. And um, <clears throat> what we saw was that we were able to, um, or what we saw Papa doing was giving us the, the go ahead to expand and contract time. And, um, you know, I felt like he wanted us to, like patient said, um, you know, go above the sun, which is um, to govern outside of time, what, mm -hmm. what we know time to be as to, you know, to govern outside of it. So, yes, I'm in agreement. Amen. 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 As AB is speaking, I'm hearing stewards of time. Be stewards mm. of time. That's what I'm hearing. And I'm in agreement. Amen. Yes. Stewards of time, it sounds to me like um like um a little off from what um we we have to do. If we are steward of time, it means that you um you are managing it and it's like you are being careful how to use it, right? Yeah. But really, really mm -hmm. what I believe the Father is saying is unhook ourselves from time. Take ourselves from being subject to time. Say that, okay, probably steward, say that we use it as and when we want it. Amen. Because I hear you. Like you are in control, you, you, are, time. you are like, you are, you are in control, you are, what can I say? Yeah, maybe stewards is not the right word, but that's what I heard. But like as in not using time wisely, but in control, being able yeah. to, 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 okay, another yeah. word for me. Divine speak. I, I see. I see your point. Speak, I think yeah. I'm the one who is who is messing up. I see your point. So it's really um being uh, putting yourself take first. I think we should take ourselves from under the time on the on the sun and time, time. Mm. and set ourselves above it like we were born to be. We were born to be above the sun. You all know we had an encounter like that, right? And then you use time as a tool. In your toolbox, yes, both time, the sun, the stars, the moon. You see, God made them all for man, everything mm -hmm. on the earth was made for man. Yes, uh, I, I just also want to share another, another um, piece about time that that um, the father recently revealed as well, and he's brought it back to my remembrance that that he always moves in in time he's not on time he's in time and you know our father is never he's never late and he's never early he's always he moves in time if i could describe it like that um he's never he's you know he doesn't move on time he moves in time and on time is 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 sort of a, a control mechanism in the earth but when you move in time you are flowing with 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 the lord if i could describe it like that i hope i'm describing it adequately i know at times it's hard to put it the exact words yes. you want to use yes and you know it, it you know yeah, we amen. Have... go ahead shingy No, you may continue. I'll come after you. Oh, no, no. you, you I was finished. Go ahead. Go ahead, Shingi. As, as you were speaking, um, Father reminded me of something that I've been struggling um, with uh, due to this, um, call, call it blended teaching, where you've got, okay, like 14 children at school. 
school and 10 at home. And um, I've been like, like last term, I've been like, everything of mine is being done in a rush where like, I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm now rushing myself. And at the end, I feel I haven't taught this thing the way I'm supposed to do. But the grace that father has given me this time is I'm not, I'm not in a rush. It's all about have we, have we, have we exhausted this thing? Are we really content with this area so much that we can move on to the next topic, which I think with due time, Father is going to give me the graceful of divine speed where I'm now able to teach something that will take me four hours, which is more like two, two days. And I'll be able to do it in, in an hour, but not, but not in a rush, but um, um, let me call it, I don't know what to call it, divine speed. But it's not rushing, like what I've been doing previously, not rushing yeah. where you even leave some important things. And, and then um, some children don't feel content and some children are clueless as to what to do. Um, so much that you also stress because you've got so much explaining to do in the afternoon where you get calls, please explain this. But now I'm realizing that even if I'm working at a slower pace, Father is teaching me, it, the, I think he's doing something, I mean, when it comes to time, that I'm not a, can I say that I'm not a slave of time? That's what I'm feeling. I'm not a slave of time. I um, I don't know, maybe I'm moving out, out of topic, but this is what I, I needed to say about time when it comes to me at the moment. Um, and I believe Father is going to give me that grace now. Um, now that I am at rest and not rushing, he's going to give me that grace to, to, to I mean, to do some, to, to teach um, with divine speed where I'm not rushing. Feel what you're seeing is divine acceleration. Divine acceleration, yes. Yes, yeah, awesome. Yes, and I, I totally agree, Shingi. And Delicia uh, says in the chat, uh, Shingi, you are working with the spirit of wisdom and understanding. And I totally arc with that. Amen. Yes. Thank you. Yes, and I, I, I totally understand what you're, what you're sharing because many of us feel that we rush from here to there and we rush from this appointment to that appointment or that project to the next project, especially when it comes to work. But I believe that part of our father addressing, addressing time and the issue of time is because he's getting ready to do something to remove us from that. So... Um, this is sort of a, a precursor to what he's about to do with the sons. I really yeah. feel that. Amen. Amen. And, and, and as you are talking, you, you've just reminded me of something which I'm not, I'm not really, I'm not really, um, it's not something that I would say. But I thought, let me say it, maybe somebody will learn something from it. At the moment, because there's a lot of things that we're planning when it comes to my wedding and everything, you know, money is um, becoming something that's, what can I say? There's no, you, you always find that you don't have enough money like you, you used to, to, like extra money lying around. So I remember I had... Um, I've got like 30, 35 brands, 35 brands that um, I've got like hard cash. And then I've been saying, oh, I need to buy this. What should I buy? I'm worried about what to eat. And uh, I needed to buy yogurt and all that. And father said to me, why are you, why are you stressing? Why are you stressing about tomorrow? Leave one day at a time. And, and I, I, I want you to, to learn to trust me. Don't start planning about tomorrow. If you go and buy your yogurt today and buy all the things you need and the money is enough, that's it. You will worry about tomorrow, tomorrow. So that's another thing. That's a little bit um, maybe off topic, but also when it comes to time that you, you take 
he actually literally said, take one day at a time. And I remember saying, repeating that on the phone to my partner saying, let's take one day at a time because this thing is where we will end up being frustrated one day at a time, one thing at a time. Like you've got a, yes. a checklist. This is done. Father has done this for me. Um, this is done. Tomorrow, what is it? So it's more or less like time, but maybe a little bit off topic. I thought I had to say that. I, actually, I believe it's linked, Shingi, because um, one thing I also learned was that um, when we're always fixated or concentrated on trying to be on time, um, we, it, does, it does cause frustration. Um, we'll always feel like we're rushing. We'll always feel like, you know, we're, we're, we're um, frustrated because we're trying to get somewhere or do something on time. But I believe our Father wants us to make the transition to being in time. I don't know exactly what that's going to look like, but we can go by the examples that have been given here today. Um, but it's still a mystery. And I believe, uh, you know, the father wants to reveal more of that mystery of, of being in time. Shingi, Shingi, when you, when you were talking, what I heard was a uh, seed time harvest. You know, that is, the, that is uh, what uh, happens under the sun. There's seed time and there is harvest. So what about if um, we take time out and we say seed harvest? Because we're talking about money, right? When you sow a mm -hmm. seed, maybe money seed, then you have to wait for time mm -hmm. to bring the harvest. So what Amen. about, mm -hmm. I'm just putting this out there from what I heard. What about seed harvest? The minute you sow, you harvest because there's no time. Because you control the time, you know? Like you sow and you wait for three months. But what about you, you sow and the next day or that very minute, you see the harvest. I remember, I, you. I, I remember during Hungry Bunch when we, we were operating in the garden, the Father's garden, we were sowing the word of God and the minute we sow, we turn around and come back. There's harvest, if you all remember. Yeah, patience that speaks of sort of a, a, a quick turnaround. Um, isn't there a scripture that talks about how the, the, the sower would overtake or the reaper would overtake take the sower? I think she left the call. Oh, I'm here. Oh. I'm here. I heard you. Yes, yeah, there's a scripture. I don't remember the reference, but um, neither. I'd have to look yeah. it up. Uh huh. And so, so um, go, go ahead. ahead. Uh, um, the well, thank you, patience. The only other thing that was coming to me also was when Yeshua Jesus changed the water into wine. Um. That was a, a miracle of time as well, because he compressed, you know, and they talked about how he saved the best wine, how the, you know, the, at the wedding, they saved the best wine for last. And that, that fermentation process for the wine, he compressed time and caused the, the water to become something that, you know, to change all the properties that would normally take so many months, so many years even, and compress time. So that was, that was awesome too. Um, yes. That was another example that was coming to me. Awesome. I believe there's many more in the Bible we haven't really outlined yet, but we'll see this coming week as we engage it. Yeah. 
So did you want to lead us then, Patience, into that? Oh, it looks like Elizabeth's just put um, something in the chat too. Um, Elizabeth says he also pulled the miracle outside of time and manifested it. He said, it is not yet my time. Okay. Yeah, uh, we can all step into it. I think we should step into a um, coming from under the sun and untethering ourselves from time, sun, and the moon. Are you mm -hmm. all in agreement? Yes. Yes. Amen. Yes. Yeah, I like what you what you, you posted, uh, Elizabeth. He put the miracle outside of time. Come on. <laughs> yeah. Yes, it's true because it, 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 the, the, the mother, Mary, was saying she should do something. And he said, woman, it's not my time yet, right? <laughs> and then he turned around and he did it. Come on. That's our <laughs> call. Okay, so what we want to do is... um um. We want to step in his presence. Let's all bring our minds here. We, we're doing this as one, okay? Do individually, yet one as a bench. Yes. We want to uh, present ourselves before the Father, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So see the Father on his throne, Jesus and the Holy Spirit by his side, and we stand right before him, and uh, Father, we want to present our bodies, our souls, and spirits as living sacrifices to you. Whilst I'm saying it, let's engage, okay? So present our bodies. Just see yourself present your body. Not just your body, your, your soul also and your spirit before the Father. Give it all to him. And as we do that, see him cover you, receiving it with great gratitude. And for that, you are also grateful. And we want to uh, acknowledge that we have allowed the time to control us. The time, the sun and the moon to control our lives. We have been subject to the sun, the moon, the stars. Because your way says that the sun will not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. That means we're not subject to them. We don't follow their dictates. So we want to unhook ourselves, ourselves from the time, from the sun, from the moon, and the stars control and dominion. We untether ourselves from them. We repent for the times we have allowed them to control us because of lack of knowledge. Unknowingly, we have subjected our lives to them all these years. But now you have enlightened us. Thank you for the revelation. Amen. We come, we come out from under you, sun, moon, stars, and time. Engage that. See yourself unhooked. You are free as a bird. Hmm. Fly over the sun. Settle there. From this day forth, we say in this before the Godhead, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, from this day forth, I, Patience Higgin, put your name there. I am not subject to sun, to the sun, to the moon, to the stars. All the star houses are under me. 
to time, to money, because time is tied to money, and to debt. Debt is tied to time. The sun will not brood over me anymore. I brood over the sun. The solar system, all the stars and the galaxies, I am under them. Sorry, I am over them. The cosmos, I am over them. Even seed time, it's not seed time and harvest anymore. It's seed harvest. The scripture you were talking about, Cindy, is Amos 9.13. Okay. Amos 9.13 is my principle. I live by that. The reaper overtakes the sower because there's no time element in it. Amen. I am redeeming the time. The sun, the time, they are no longer my masters. I am the master of time and the sun. Yeshua is my master. Hallelujah. And I even redeem the lost time. The times that seemingly I have wasted, I redeem it. Payback time. It's coming back to me. The sun will not smit me by day. No more nor the moon by night. I am no longer under the, under the time of the world. And in heaven where I live and move and have my being, there is no time. He has put eternity in my heart, the timeless world in my heart. I bring it out and I rule in it and form it over this earth. I am timeless. Just as Jesus was. And I prayed like Joshua. I prayed like Jesus. About time. So see yourself above the sun. And see what the father wants to do with you. From there. Anybody wants to share what they they experiencing? What happened with you? <laughs> um, patience. That um, what what I had seen was a um, biblical cord, kind of uh, stretching for me and I to what I think is the earth. And then that umbilical cord was kind of severed or, or, or snapped. And I was just floating off into space. And I felt like freedom, like I was freed from something. Mm. Whoa. And I could it's see the star systems. I could see the, the sun and could see the moon and I was going by it. Come on. Hallelujah. Yeah. Mm. It's similar to what I saw. Mm -hmm. I saw mm -hmm. that um, when I said I hook myself from under the, the sun, I saw like um, uh, the sword of the spirit. 
mm. Zain, come yes. and then cut a, like a, a, a chain, a mm. thick iron chain connecting me to time. Yes. Cut it, say that I was free. And I flew like a bird and settled above the sun. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The connection is broken. I'm yes. free. Yes. Anybody else wants to share? I saw the gates of eternity open up in my heart and in my mind. Mm. Awesome. Awesome. He has put so, eternity in our hearts. Yeah. So the gate has to be open for it to flow out. The timeless world is already in our hearts. Yes. So Elizabeth, you stepped out of time into eternity. It's almost like I see you living out of eternity. Yes, and I see it expanding like a huge sphere around my physical form that stands on the earth. Mm. Wow. Is anybody else seeing anything? I just felt a freedom, mm. a, a sense of being freed. Mm. Hallelujah. Beautiful. I mean, I feel my body being immense, <clears throat> being immersed in frequency. And so frequency is just like, just beaming out of me, like, like the frequency that you see from like a thunder lights kind of frequency just beaming out of me, up and oh. down, all over. Amen. I also um, feel free. Um, first, um, um, and, and being untangled from the earth. So um, more or less like um, floating around the earth and then later now above, above the earth, above the, the stars, the moon and the sun. More, yes. more, um, I feel free. Yes. Yes to freedom. Yes. That's very similar to what I saw, Shingy, as well. I felt like I was just floating, floating away. say something even if it looks a little bit weird but um as okay. as that was happening father kept saying mindset mindset so i don't know whether this process requires a, a shift of the of the mindset hmm it, it does yes Um, that we need to, to come out of thinking always in, in terms of time and how much time something is going to take. Yes. So we have to renew our minds, you know, mm -hmm. about time. And that's the same thing as saying that you come up from under the sun. The sun was ruling you. The time was ruling you. Now you come up from under the sun. But it starts with your mind change. Yes. Because as a man think it, so he is. So if you're thinking the sun is your master, the sun is your master, the time is your master. But
But if you're thinking I am the master of time and sun, then you are. And even it, it brings to my mind what you said earlier on, Cindy, that um, you felt like you're not supposed to wear, wear your watch anymore. <laughs> because it's like you are watching the time for yes. it to control you, right? <laughs> That's exactly it. And I, at that time, I felt it was so symbolic. Anybody else wants to share? Oh, we, we are complete. Sorry, my internet had just cut out. I just had to um, re-enter the call. So can everybody still hear me? Yes. Okay, thanks. I'm seeing something a little bit more here related to that sphere. I see myself in the center of, of eternity, in this sphere, on this throne. And I see all these multiple timelines all around me based upon choices I choose to make in any direction I want to move. This eternal realm moves with me. But I also see that the, the way to stay in the eternal realm outside of space and time is to live in the moment. Because anytime we have a past memory that we think about, we actually move back in time, we move to that place. Mm -hmm. And anytime we think about the future, we, we, we are taken into the future. So I'm kind of seeing that, that maybe a key is to live in the moment, live moment by moment by the breath. That is good, Elizabeth. That, that's, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yes. Yes. Amen. And I had to say something um, connected to what you you've just said, Elizabeth. When you when you live in the time in the moment, um, Father just reminded me something, and he said you need to share this. Um, there's a time when um, my my partner had to go to work the following day, and the fuel wasn't enough. And when he got in the car in the morning, mm -hmm. he had a little bit of money to fuel but he found extra hundred rand note in the car. And that was a miracle because mm. we kept on saying, you know, let's live in the moment. Let's trust God. And that's, that's a sign of, if you live in the moment, um, you don't have to worry. Whatever needs to be done, God makes sure. Father makes sure that it is done. Yes. Yes. Amen. Thank you. Elizabeth, yes. that sphere is coming back to me as well. The sphere. Um, is it, can you describe what, what was in that sphere? Or you might have said it before, sorry, but um, it's coming back to me. There's something about that sphere. Well, it kind of looks like the will within the wheel with multiple timelines, multiple ages, multiple creations, all spinning around at the same time. And wow. when we live in eternity, we have access to all of that. And anytime yes. we make a decision, even with the thought, we're immediately translated to that place. Yes. But when we're in the earth realm and we're you know, when we get into worry about the future or, you know, angst about the past, we are literally moved there and we relive, relive that moment. So that's yes. why he wants us to, to live by the breath and the hay and in the moment. Yeah. That's it. That is so spot on. Elizabeth, you want uh, to lead us to step into this sphere? Please. 
Sure, sure. Be happy Thank to. Be my own. You're welcome. Is everybody in agreement with that? Yes. Amen. Okay. Amen. 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 So what I first saw was the opening of the gates of eternity in my heart and in my mind. So Father, by faith, in oneness, in unity, we open up the gates of eternity in our hearts and our minds. On the count of four, let's say, be open. One, two, three, four. Be open. Be open. And for me, I began to see this bright, bright light and shining expanse come out of me and all around me. And Father, by faith, as the expanse of eternity moves about all of our dimensions, realms, and realities, we take our place in oneness in you. In your in your in eternity, I literally saw it like an eye, like we were inside of this eye, the eye of eternity. Mm. We step into the eye of eternity and we take our place on your throne. Thank you, Father. Please add, guys, if you see anything else, sense anything else to add here. As you spoke about the eye, Elizabeth, I heard all knowing, all seeing eye. And I'm seeing the eye like um like the eye of the Almighty, one big eye, and we are the apple of his eyes. The very apple. Can you imagine time controlling the apple of God's eye? Absolutely impossible. Mm. Mm. This is who we are. Mm. The apple of his eye. Amen. Timeless. Yes, amen. Amen. Stepping into the water in his eye. Can you say that again, Delicia? I didn't quite quite hear. It's, I was thinking of the water in his eye, stepping into the water of his eye. Mm. Mm. Awesome. And you know, it's, this, it's not a it's not a, a, a stationary eye. You know, the eye is it's 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 like moving. Um mm -hmm. moving in a in a in a, is it vibrating or moving? I'm not seeing yeah. Both, both. You see, yeah. you, you just took it from my mouth. This scripture was coming to me. The eye of the Lord moves mm. about to and fro. That's it. Yes, yeah. I love and that. And you said that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Amen. Awesome, awesome. Wow, so we sing through his eyes. Oh, my word. It's beautiful. Yes, and we are the apple of God's eye. And his eye is ever upon us, watching over us. Awesome. Do you all feel complete? Yes. I feel complete. <laughs> yes. Thank you, everybody. Thank you yes. for your presence and your participation. Every joint supplies and it makes it beautiful. Yes. So this week, let's try and engage rich time, engage redeeming the time, because you know what? You are baptized. You are timeless. 
Yes. Amen. You are the apple of his eye. You are living in the moment. You are beyond time. The sun and Amen. the moon, they have no power over you. Amen. Hallelujah. We, we are free from, from time. Come on. Amen. 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 Yes. Amen. Um, Cindy, can you stop the recording? Yes. Thank you, patience. Thank you, in. Cindy. It was good. Thank you, all of you. Everyone was awesome. Yes, it was. And just trying to, but 